It's a choice I make. Amen. You can choose life, you can choose death. You can choose blessing or a curse. Mm. Moses, the man of God, said it in Deuteronomy chapter 30. He said, Behold, I lay before you life and death, mm. blessing and cursing. 
Choose blessing. Amen. Choose life. Amen. That Amen. you may live and your children after you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Father in Jesus' mighty name, we rejoice whenever we come together to study the word of God because we see that we can never understand the word without the revelation that comes from your Holy Spirit. Even now we pray and ask that your precious Holy Spirit will move upon each one of us in a fresh manner all over again. May the anointing that is flowing right now destroy every yoke of bondage. May the covering protection of the living God be upon your children. May the eyes of our understanding be opened to see the vast riches that lies in your word and how you desire for us to prosper and to grow and to greatly increase and to have riches and honor and wealth in our lives and in our homes for your glory. May your word never return void, but let it accomplish the purpose for which it was sent forth. So lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Today I want to continue like I've been doing for the last four weeks about how when you increase your wisdom, you increase your wealth. We're not talking about any get-rich-quick scheme, like most people understand prosperity in a very warped manner. They don't understand that prosperity is a very solid basis of blessing that God wants us to have and to enjoy, not once in a lifetime or once in a way, but all our lifetime, so that we can live in a state of constant blessing, to be a blessing to others in this world. Now, I shared with you about something last week when I told you, you are close to something good happening in your life. Like we all are aware, these are the days of the wheat harvest, Pentecost the time in which God directly dealt with men and gave man his loss. And in giving of his loss, he also gave his, of his spirit many centuries later for man to cling to his spirit so that every law of God would be workable in a man's life. Now, I want you to come with me to a place which highlights for us God's desire for his people. But before we read from there, I want you to turn with me please in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
And I want to show you a few verses from Deuteronomy chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, I want you to note down these uh, scriptures that we are going to be talking about and uh, we are going to be reading from that you may learn from these portions of scripture how God wants you to forever tear down all those thoughts and ideas that come from men who don't read the word of God, who read part of the word of God and then decide that uh, poverty is a great virtue and want is a great virtue and you know they highlight the lives of a couple of uh, men of God or women of God who have gone through great uh, deprivation and they want everybody to go through that kind of life of deprivation and they make that alone uh, look like it is the way in which God wants to lead his children uh, along those lines and along those paths. Now come with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and let me read to you from verse 1 onwards. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Now this is the way in which wealth and riches begin to manifest in a believer's life. Remember this was spoken to people who came out of Egypt with silver and gold. God didn't say, listen, you have everything, that's it. Don't expect anything more. To expect anything more is to live in greed. To expect anything more is to live in a state of uh, discontentment. Remember, God was giving commandments so his children could observe to do them, that they could live and multiply and go in and possess the land which God swear to give them to their fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now in verse 2 it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, and to know what was in your heart. Now this is the main reason God takes men and women through a path that often appears to be like a wilderness experience, but he wants them to know that's not the end. If you're living in a situation that is looking much like a wilderness to you, I want you to be encouraged to know right now that it's not your end. Because when God led them for 40 years in the wilderness, he said it was to see what is in their heart. That means when God puts you through the grind or leads you through a particular situation that looks like a wilderness experience, he wants to try you to see what is on your heart. And you must be aware that when he has proven that the right motives are on your heart, then he is going to take you out of that wilderness and into the promised land. Verse 3, And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna which you knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth men live. Now you must understand the very purpose for which God sent manna. Remember there was a law regarding the collection of manna. They could work six days to collect manna, but on the seventh day they had to rest, and they had to collect enough manna for two days. And when God spoke it first, it appeared like a strange thing to the children of Israel. In fact, some of them couldn't believe that uh, something like this is going to happen. And instead of doing it the right way, they started storing up manna. And what happened was, when they refused to go out each day to collect manna, based on God's word to them, they found that the manna that came from heaven stank, got corrupted, and bread worms. Now remember, that's how it is even in our everyday Christian life. If we don't walk by faith, and we start yielding to fear, and we're living by fear, and we walk doubting God's word, 
Sooner or later, even the best things that happen is bound to breed corruption. So God was telling them, I fed you with manna to show you that man will not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord that man live. So God wanted the children of Israel, even in Bible days, to live by faith and not by sight. He wanted them to act on his word. He wanted them to believe his word. And he wanted them to live by his word. Now look at verse 4. Thy raiment waxed not old upon you, neither did your feet or foot swell these 40 years. It was miraculous. They were walking and walking and walking on harsh terrain, but they didn't have Anyone didn't suffer from feet swelling. How was their raiment? They didn't have tailors. They didn't have, uh, you know, people who could stitch them the best of garments in the wilderness. But for 40 years, their raiment waxed not old upon them. That means it was as good as new each day when they put it on. The Bible says, Thou shalt also consider in your heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Continuously God was dealing with his people as a father would deal with his child. The reason was this in verse 7. For the Lord your God bringeth you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths, that spring out of valleys and hills. Listen, a land of wheat and barley. Remember this, the days of the wheat harvest. And wines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. I want you to mark these things down. I have a highlighter with you. Mark it in your Bible. Because these are words that describe to us how good God was and is and will always be when it comes to him providing for his children. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it. Are you listening? That means whatever you saw as a lack in your prior, previous life in what you called a so-called land of Luxury, which was really a land of bondage to you, Egypt. You thought it was luxurious to live under Pharaoh, but in reality it was bondage after bondage after bondage and uh, mass deception. When you enter the land of promise, there will be no scarcity, there will be no lack. This is the Christian kingdom living blessing that God wants his children to have and to enjoy. This is the way it ought to be for every believer, regardless of who you are. The kingdom of God is a place where you will eat bread without scarceness. You shall lack, you shall not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, I want you to circle this word, when you are full. These are words that talk to us about the complete, wholesome blessing of riches and honor. Obviously, this is not talking about eating spiritual bread. This is talking about eating material, physical bread. He says, when thou hast eaten and art full, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God, for the good land which he had given you. That means the land that God was willing to give his people. A land that would be called Canaan. Was not heaven. Because in heaven there are no annex. In heaven there are no giants living there for you to go and conquer. Canaan was on this earth. Canaan is a place which was on this earth for the Israelite. The same way. The promised land is not just to die and to get to heaven where there is no opposition there, no demons there, 
no annex there, no giants there to challenge us. No, it's all on this earth. The promised land is living on this earth, inheriting the word of God as our inheritance, as our substance. The Bible says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, I want you to take a note of what all is going to multiply. Thy herds, thy flocks, your silver and your gold and all that thou hast is multiplied. Are you listening? I want you to make a note of verse 13, put an asterisk close to that verse and learn from the Bible what God wants you to have. God is not simply uh, making you toy with the idea of wealth and riches. He is not mocking you. He knows exactly what is in your account. He knows exactly what is in your hands. He knows how much is in your purse, how much is in your pocket. He knows exactly what you have. God is not mocking you. He is saying everything that you have is under the law of multiplication. All that thou hast is multiplied. I want you to highlight this please because if you will get this truth today into your hearts and into your minds that all that I have can be multiplied. You are going to see the greatest blessing of all happen in your life which will come by a divine principle of multiplication not subtraction, not even addition, multiplying. Everything you have can be multiplied. If you know a little bit about math, you will know that anything that can be multiplied is far greater than anything that can be added or subtracted. So I want you to understand this. If you add 3 plus 3, you just get 6. But if you multiply 3 into 3, you get a different figure. You get 9. So, I want you to understand that that's just basic maths. Now, if you subtract 3 from 3, you get 0. Now, God's not talking about addition. He's not even talking about subtraction. He's talking about multiplication. So, everything you have comes under the law of multiplication when you're living in the kingdom of God. For that, you must know that we're not talking about joining some church, we're not talking about being Pentecostal or Presbyterian, or Baptist, we're not talking about anything about denominations or what denominations believe. Remember the Bible is not about denominations. The Bible is again and again and again a revelation of God to man. You want to know what is the essence of the Bible? It is a faith book from a faith God to a faith people who will obey it and walk by faith and not by sight. That's the bottom line. It's not about the book being Pentecostal or Presbyterian or Baptist or Anabaptist or Catholic, Roman Catholic. The Bible is not about it. The Bible is not about any denomination or any private belief system. The Bible is about God and the Bible is God's revelation about himself to men. Therefore, I want you to understand that all that you have comes under the law of multiplication. So wealth and riches, when it is in the house of a man who greatly delights in God's word and God's commandments, you must understand that it is a reality that God wants you to understand can be yours if you'll only make the little change in your mind and believe. Yes, if God has said it, then that must be true. So what I'm going through right now is not the truth. It's subject to change and it is subject to the change of multiplication. Don't talk about the change of subtraction. Today we have preachers who are teaching about subtraction. They're talking about addition. They're not talking about exactly the word that God uses. But the word he uses is 
in verse 13 and all that thou hast is multiplied so it's talking about goodly houses multiplied herds multiplied flocks multiplied silver and gold multiplied now who's he talking this words to to people who are still in the wilderness I want you to understand that today we read Deuteronomy we're just talking uh, we're we just thinking about God talking to Israelites who are already inside the promised land wrong he was talking to people who were in the wilderness with silver and gold and they didn't have any reason to know that the silver and gold they had would be multiplied they were just thinking that they had silver and gold and that they're going to live in the promised land as a community who would enter into the promised land and live on very ordinary terms. But God had something else in mind. He was thinking about silver multiplied, gold multiplied, herds multiplied. All would be multiplied in the land of promise. That's how it is going to be for the Christian believer. It's not how you are today. It's how we operate by the laws of God in the kingdom of God that will bring about the law of multiplication into your life as a harvest that comes in a manner that brings glory, honor, and praise to God. So it's not about how you are today. It's not about what you have today in the wilderness. It's not what you are in possession of today in your life that may appear to be like a place where everything is static nothing is changing remember the silver and gold didn't multiply in the wilderness the silver and gold God said would multiply inside the land of promise so right now if you're in a wilderness setting don't despair good is going to happen when you enter into the place where you're walking by faith and not by sight so I want you to focus right now very clearly on the law of multiplication when you look at Deuteronomy 8 13 it has not deviated very much from Genesis 1 28 even there God asked the first man and the woman to multiply it was not just an initial command from God which later he backtracked on it's always been on the mind of God for his people to multiply and how it's not just in numbers that they were asked to multiply now that's where we always uh, focus on and we come to a place where we are not able to look beyond uh, physical multiplication or multiplication by numbers or of men and women who are uh, you know bringing forth uh, children and grandchildren we're we are just sometimes focusing only on uh, children and people but multiplication for God was to be in everything his children possessed. And that's why he's going into very specific details, telling the children of Israel, now listen, this is not to Moses or to Moses' household, this is not even to the uh, household of Aaron and the Aaronic priesthood, it's talking to all Israel. That means God wanted all Israel to have multiplied herds, multiplied flocks, multiplied silver, multiplied gold, and all that they had to multiply. I want you to believe right now that this law of multiplication will begin to take a firm effect on your life from this point on because you have understanding about the law of multiplication. Now, let me read to you four, five more verses and we're going to close with prayer. But I want you to see how this multiplication would result in what would be called wealth remember wealth and riches will be in your house now let's read that then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage which led you through that great and terrible wilderness now God's not uh, denying the fact that the wilderness was a very terrible place to be in and a great place to be in. So I want you to highlight the word great and terrible wilderness. So God knew it would be terrible and filled with all kinds of danger. Wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water. I want you to highlight this phrase please. That means he took you to a place where there was such scarcity 
not because he didn't know about it but because he wanted you never to long for the wilderness to be your final destination i want you to understand this well god doesn't want the wilderness and a drought ridden land to be the place where you finally find yourself in and that's your final destination no god wants to take you to the place of plenty because earlier he said it is a good land in verse 7 a land of brooks of water and of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills i mean what more can you expect for god to talk about the promised land or the kingdom of god how it would be it would not be a drought ridden place where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint now god had to do something miraculous there so he brought water out of the flint who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end now i wanted to highlight this particular part of this verse verse 16 in your bible and i want you to know that god is tremendously good to his people why because he wanted his children at their latter end to experience good now please listen very carefully to what i have to share with you if you're under the impression that as you grow older you're going to lack resources you're going to end your lifetime with lack as part of your old age i want you to break free from that mindset right now in jesus name you have to decide in your heart i will not go with that kind of a mindset to the grave my end days will be good because god wants to do good in my latter days at the latter end that means as i keep growing older and older i'm not going to become impoverished i'm not going to lack you have to decide that right now in jesus name because i sense in my spirit that there are people in certain age groups who are slowly settling it in their minds that their life towards the latter end of their life is going to be a life of misery of lack of not having god wants you to break free from that right now in jesus name as he is sending forth his word to you where you are mark verse 16 down to do the, to do you good at your latter end and thou shalt say in thine heart my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this wealth god doesn't want you to brag about being a self-made man it's not your might or your hand that has given you this wealth but thou shalt remember the lord your god for he it is that giveth thee authority to get wealth power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day the latter two verses says and it shall be if thou shall do at all forget the lord thy god and walk after other gods and serve them then worship them i testify against you this day that you shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. I want you to circle the last part of this verse. The last part of this verse is talking to you and to me about one very important truth. Are you obedient to the voice of the Lord your God? Now sometimes people are thinking we have to be obedient to commandments. Or we have to be obedient to rules and regulations and statutes and this and that. God is not talking about that. He is asking you only one thing. What has he spoken to you about? What are you listening to right now? It's the voice of the Lord coming to you when we read the scriptures. As preachers we are only giving voice to the word of the Lord which is already spoken. It's already spoken, already God breathed, and 
written and given into our hands. Are you obedient to the voice of the Lord your God? That means are you willing to obey and believe that the law of multiplication is for you? Are you willing to make that transition in your mind from earthly thinking where you think that as I keep growing older and older and older, I'll have more and more lack in my life and begin to think, no, God will do me good in my latter days. You have to make the transition. You have to choose to believe the right thing. I mean, you can sit and argue all day as long as you want against God's word. My friend, you will never win. Remember this, you will never win. And the more you fight God, the more you're giving uh, the enemy a chance to attack you and overcome you and keep you in bondage. But the moment you sit and say, God, I'll take your word. I'll believe your word. I'll receive this word into my heart and my life as the word from you, your voice to me. It's not the voice of some preacher. I'm going to take it as your voice to me because I have my Bible with me. And I'm believing that this word is coming to me from you because you know my situation right now. I assure you, in the authority of God's word and in his name and through the power of the blood of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus' blood and the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will begin to see the best manifest in your life. Believe me, you will never be the same from this point on. Life is going to be very, very different. Your abundance, your miracles of increase, your desire to prosper on a continual basis and for your hands to see your labor honored with financial blessing is going to become a reality. You will not need to live just wasting your time thinking God will do everything. God's going to do. God will give you the ability to see the silver and the gold that you presently possess multiplied because you have chosen to put your trust in godly wisdom and the way godly wisdom will operate in an increasing way in your life. Shun foolishness. Shun foolish acts of disobedience. Shun everything that is not from God. Go with God and enjoy the fullness of his spirit. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for the words of assurance that we have received this day from the scriptures, especially from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Powerful your word is to your people. And how powerful it is to each one of us as we listen and obey the voice of the Lord to us. Father, I thank you because you are bringing us to a place where we understand the law of multiplication. How it is not a mosaic command to multiply. That it was purposed by you on that very day that you spoke it to Adam and Eve. And you created them in the image and likeness of God. And the blessing was pronounced on their life to multiply, to replenish the earth, to subdue it, to exercise dominion. So let it be. Oh, so let it be in Jesus' name. Manifest yourself in your people's lives that they may understand how godly wisdom it's not just some ethereal thing, but is so real and so dynamic that it produces grand and good benefits in the lives of everybody, which includes wealth and riches in the house and houses of your people. May they see your goodness in the land of the living. May they understand that you will never leave them nor forsake them. That arrogance and ignorance has no part, no place in your kingdom. We're asked to walk in humility. We're asked to always remember the place from where we came out from, the land of bondage, and how you brought us out 
with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm to lead us and to guide us into the land of promise. Although we had to walk through the great and terrible wilderness. Oh precious father, may your children not collapse in the wilderness. May they not die in the wilderness. May they not be eh, extinguished, oh God, in the wilderness because of lack of energy to make it through the wilderness. Have mercy upon your people, oh God. Reach out and touch them right now in Jesus' name. Show them your mercy in the land of the living. Empower them. Encourage them. Just like you've been doing to us all through these days. In the name of Jesus. Be everything to them, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. Looking forward to seeing your children see all that is in their hands multiplied. For good, that your name will be glorified. And your name would be lifted up on high. Waymaker, promise keeper. O oh, mighty God, almighty God, be glorified. Again and again and again in your people's lives. For your glory. Thank you Holy Spirit. Let your church be built. On the solid foundation of your word. The voice of the Lord ring clear. Through the church. To every believer. Every day. For your glory. And your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said. Amen. And Amen. In the blessing of God the Father. The blessing of God the Son and the blessing of God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us both now and until Jesus comes again. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know my friends that we are living in very blessed times. Of course, the world may not know how blessed we are because we have God's word with us. The world doesn't have God's word. They have no revelation about a God who is a living God. Try as much as they will. They are still struggling to come to grips with what is happening in this world. But the Christian believer, we know that God is totally in charge. Bible says a thousand may fall by our side, ten thousand by our right hand, but it will not come nigh us. Only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord, even the Most High, our habitation. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling place. Be of good cheer. God loves you. And his love for you is abundant. Continue to stay in the word. Don't deviate from the word. Don't listen to teaching and you know things that are deviant from the word of God and keeps trying to be attractive and trying to reach out to those who have itching ears. Itching ears are those men and women who like to hear what they like to hear. But they're not just re really tuning into God at all. They just like to listen to something. But they don't want to see anything that is long lasting happening in their life. Don't be one such individual. Trust God. And to know Him is to know His power, might and glory. God bless you. ஆயுதம் வாய்க்காதே உன்னை அழைத்தவர் உண்மை தேவன் அவதாசற்கு நீதியவர் உன்னை அழைத்தவர் உண்மை தேவன் அவதாசற்கு நீதியவர் துதி செய்வாடங்காத கிருபைகளுக்கா என்றும் தாங்கும் தம் புயவே 
இந்த இயேசுவின் நாமமே என்னி துதி செய்வா Make sure you don't miss receiving our free monthly newsletter The Pulpit which contains a four part teaching series on various bible topics that will help you live in victory. You can read it online by going to christchapel.in and click on ebook library where you will find all our newsletters available. To receive a physical copy of Pulpit you can go to christchapel.in and click on join now. and fill in your complete postal mailing address along with your contact mobile number and we will be happy to send it to you free and postpaid should you want to receive the newsletter via email do include your request along with your current email id thank you and god bless